Welcome to the unbelievable large-scale real-life exploration game, China Trips, from Rookie to Legend. Upon our six levels, you'll have to start as a rookie player and figure out your way to becoming a true China travel legend. And this experience starts the moment you enter China. Next. Hey, hello. Good. Hello. 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 I want to eat a burger. Oh my gosh, so much! I want to have dijua and yuwa, mala tang. I want to have the spiciest hot pot. You tried the most hot pot? And and and. Okay, okay, okay. You passed. Okay. Learn more. Pass or fail? Learn more. But don't worry guys, it's not so hard to enter China. If you want to experience the charm and beauty of China, you should definitely visit the places Amy the Legend mentioned. What should I prepare before coming to China? Let's get back to the point. Do you see this big backpack on my back? When you really come to China, what should you really prepare for? There are two kinds of preparation. One is real items, the other is virtual items. For real items, you need visa, passport, cash, plug adapter, here you go. But most importantly are the virtual items. Actually, this video is here to show you that cell phone and internet are always gonna help you in China. Downloading these apps will make your China trip incredibly convenient. Alipay, WeChat, Trip.com, Amaps, Didi. Here is a detailed list of items and apps we recommend you to prepare in advance. How do I apply for a Chinese visa? Okay, so before you get the process started, it may be helpful for you to know that China has several 24, 72, and 144 hour visa free transit zones. And just to break it down, 144 hours is six days. So that's a pretty sizable trip. But if you need a regular visa for visiting more cities in China, that's where applying for a visa is gonna come into play. So this is what you gotta do. You wanna download the application form from the China Embassy website, fill it out, make sure you tick the box for L, which is tourist visa. You also want to make sure that your passport has at least two free blank pages as well as it's not going to be expiring within the next six months otherwise you won't be able to apply for your visa okay are you with me so far next step you're going to want to go to your local Chinese embassy you're going to want to make an appointment you have to make an appointment for that you want to hand in all your documents wait four to five business days and there you go you've got your tourist visa you're ready to come to China and you have just graduated from rookie to beginner
Catching bullet trains in China is my favorite. So firstly, you don't need to come and collect a manual ticket. You can just use your passport to scan and enter the station. Your passport is your ticket. Secondly, it is smooth and steady the entire way. There is no turbulence like you would find on a flight. And thirdly, you can order takeout on trains. I mean, enough said, it's life changing. So if you wanna buy a train ticket here in China, you can go to trip.com, you can download the app. You can also download the 12306 app, that also works. But if you wanna come and manually buy your tickets, every train station will have a manual channel that you can come and buy your tickets by cash. What are some great tips for taking flights in China? Why is it me who's showing you the flight section? Well, check out my flight map over the past six months. If you haven't arrived in China yet, big cities with big airports like Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou are great choices. Oh, and don't forget to check your luggage allowance. Why? Because some people forget to check the extra luggage cost, like me. Also, I must emphasize your choice of clothes coming to China. The temperature gap here is extremely wide. In the winter, it can get from negative 30 degrees in Harbin to 20 degrees in the south in Sanya. So you must check the temperature before you arrive. Some Chinese people wear their thermal pants before they board a flight from the south of China to the north. Really, <laughs> it's kind of a good choice. Anyways, when it comes to flight booking, I extremely recommend you to use trip.com. It's quite cheap. How do I take metros in China? Okay, so when it comes to cost-effective travel, you cannot go past the metro. I can travel from anywhere in this city for under 10 RMB. And for example, I can travel from here to Sihu, the West Lake, and that would cost me around 65 RMB in a taxi. But if I take the metro, for example, it would only be for renminbi, which I think is pretty, pretty good. And considering that often here in the big cities, there's a lot of traffic, it's often actually faster to catch the metro. So for me, often metro is the way to go. So if you wanna try out the metro for yourself here in China, you can open up your Alipay, you go into transport button here, and it'll give you a QR code. You simply scan this when you enter a station and when you leave a station, and that's that. But of course, if you don't have the Alipay function, you can always go straight to a counter or to one of the little machines and pay cash to get your ticket as well. I warn all of you guys, although most of the metro stations have public bathrooms, 99% of them don't have toilet paper. I have this friend, he had to go to the bathroom, no paper. I'll see you later. Yeah, I don't know. In my experience, usually when they say I have a friend, it means them. <laughs> Okay, so how do you catch a taxi in China? So if you arrive at an airport or a train station, you can simply follow the signs for the taxi queue. If you're on the street like I am here, you can also just raise your hand to hail a taxi. But when you get in a taxi, I would suggest you prepare a piece of paper with the name of where you wanna go in Chinese, the address of where it is in Chinese, as well as maybe a picture or even a map on this piece of paper. That way they'll know exactly where to take you. So one thing you guys need to know about catching a taxi here in China, it's not so much about the destination per se, but about the journey along the way because these taxi drivers, they are a lot of fun. Hey, I always ask taxi drivers about where to go and eat as my first thing I do when I get to a new location. So I would really recommend that you bring along some material to help you communicate with the taxi drivers here. And if you have a Chinese SIM card, you can just download an app called Didi, just like Uber, put your destination and get on a car. Really easy. What are you doing here? Didn't you just have a diarrhea? <laughs> I'm better now. Okay, <laughs> that's good. How do I read maps in China? If you have an iPhone, just use Apple Maps. But if you want to find more local places, I highly recommend this plan routine function on Alipay, right next to the metro function. If you're a proficient in Chinese, like me, you can try Gauda Ditu. Now that you've completed your understanding of China's transportation, trains, metros, taxis, flights, you have completed level two and have become an amateur. She went, your Wi Fi, Ma.
，你们有 WiFi 吗？你们 WiFi 面是多少啊？求求了，有 WiFi 吗 ？WiFi！ Oh my gosh, this guy beside me is just asking for the WiFi everywhere. It's so weird. Yeah, it's so beautiful here. What have you been up to? Yeah, no, Hongdo is beautiful here. 师傅，请问有 WiFi 吗？打到个五高的哪里那个 WiFi 的？ It's alright. You can use my hotspot. Oh my god, lifesaver! What's the password? L E A R N M O R E. Huh? Learn more? Yep. <laughs> How can I get online in China? China's 5G network infrastructures are extremely advanced. We made a video once. We went to the north end, south end, east end, and west end of China. Made a video call. No lags. Now. If you're in China for less than seven days, there are two solutions. One, open your data roaming, have it on. Second, get an e-SIM card. However, if you're here for more than seven days, I highly suggest you to get a local SIM card and get a longer package. Having a SIM card in China is very, very useful, and by having a Chinese number, you'll have access to things like ordering takeout online, ride hailing. You'll have access to Chinese TikTok. You can even scan the QR code on the table of a restaurant to order your food. And last but not least, online shopping. <laughs> So spicy. So good. Hi, excuse me, how much? No, you can sell it. I buy one hundred. Okay. Give me two hundred dollars. I'll give you fifty. Excuse me, what did you say? Two hundred. I'll give you fifty. What? Give me forty-eight back. Thank you. Give me two hundred. I'll give you fifty. 哎，你好，你扫我还是我扫你？我扫你，谢谢，拜拜。What should I know about using cash and cards in China? Before arriving to China for the first time, you must wonder how much cash should I bring? Well, let me tell you, in China, big cities like Beijing, Shanghai, for one meal you have to pay 75 yuan on average. So, you should have at least 1,000 yuan in cash with you. Secondly, very important, in China, some places might not accept Visa or MasterCard. So, before you come, remember to take out some real cash from your bank or ATM or exchange some money at the airport. Amy, is e-wallet popular among Chinese people? Very, very popular. So here in China, people mostly pay by scanning QR codes. So before you arrive in China, would highly recommend you get your e-wallet set up in Alipay, where you can also link your foreign bank card. So that's very, very convenient. And one phrase I'd really recommend you learn before you come here is "wasauni haishini sawo," which basically means "Do you scan me or I scan you?" Because in every payment situation, someone needs to be scanned. Let me show you how it's done. 哎，你好，多少钱？啊、uh, ，我扫你还是你扫我 ？OK， so I can now scan her. But of course, this situation only works if you have enough battery in your phone. But you can also scan anywhere. This really cool portable shared chargers anywhere in China. Isn't it cool? Yes, but keep in mind the fees for these can be quite high, so keep an eye on that. So I think once you are able to use these portable electric chargers in China, you have finally graduated to professional level. Pro.
What? How should I choose a hotel suitable for travelers? For booking a hotel in China, I strongly recommend you to use Trip.com. Why? Well, they have so many hotel options. And they have many hotel reviews by travelers who've been here and they know if it's good or bad. You can also check if they have English-speaking staff before you come. If they accept your credit card, you can check if there's foods you like and if they have all of those smart delivery robots that you just saw in the video. So use Trip.com for hotel booking in China. So I have stayed in hundreds of hotels here in China. So I'm gonna run you through what you can expect when you're checking into a Chinese hotel. So first things first, you wanna give your passport to the front desk. <laughs> because they're gonna to need to see your visa information to check you in. Some hotels will require you to manually fill out a check-in form. This is rare, but don't be surprised if it happens. And last thing, I'm sure the question on everyone's lips, what time is checkout? Well, it's always good to ask this question because it varies between hotels. Some will say 12 p.m., but some will allow you to check out as late as 2 p.m. So welcome to my hotel room for this evening. I'm gonna be running you through what you can expect from a typical Chinese hotel. So let's start off in the bathroom. So of course we have our disposable toiletries here. You'll find this in pretty much every single hotel you stay in here in China. Moving into the main room, we have some slippers, essential. You can wear them around the room, love those. Another essential, which is of course the kettle. You may or may not know this, but Chinese people really love to drink hot water. So you can prepare some for yourself here in your room, as well as of course some tea, another thing that Chinese people really love to drink. Now moving into the room, we've got a nice big bed here. And another thing I wanted to mention is here in China, the plugs may look different from your home country's plugs. So make sure you bring some travel adapters. They'll look something roughly like this. And basically that's all you need to know. You have officially graduated to world class. What are some great tips for visiting attractions in China? Check out trip.com so you can avoid all the problems I've encountered. Choose the place you'd like to visit. Check out ticket information by clicking on the place you'd like to visit. Fill in the required information, pay, and generate a QR code. Or just enter with your passport. Soon, you'll become a true legend. You can also search on WeChat for the official account of the tourist destination of your choosing. But you'll have to be a bit clever if you want to find the English interface. Let me give you another very important tip. Some of the most popular scenic spots in China are flooded with tourists. <laughs> My God. Of course, for the giant panda, right? So please book your tickets in advance. One week ahead is a must. Also, some museums are not open on a Monday, so check out the opening times of each scenic spot. Let me go check out the panda. And if you want to get a deeper understanding of the history and stories behind the places you visit, you might want to consider booking a tour guide on trip.com so you can learn while having fun. How should I communicate with Chinese locals? So I'm going to teach you two very, very important phrases in Chinese. This, jiga, and that, nega. So these two phrases will help you communicate in many situations here in China, but don't stress too much because these days there are so many apps that will help you translate. Some apps will even help you understand local dialect. Hey, can you speak Sichuan? This girl is so beautiful. Can you This man looks like a man. So now you've learned to communicate with locals, I don't think there's anything stopping you from becoming a Chinese travel legend. Hey guys, I'm Raz. And I'm Amy. The inspiration for this video came from the many difficulties Amy and I have experienced living in China over the years and from questions we got from our friends who've never been to China. So if you have any plans to come to China anytime soon, I hope you found this video useful. And who knows, maybe it's even ignited an interest in China. That's cool too. I truly recommend using trip.com. It's the must-have app 
when you travel to China. So Trip.com is dedicated to improving the experience of foreigners coming to China. So they've actually prepared a very detailed guideline of things that you need to prepare before you come here. But things like organizing a SIM card, getting a visa, setting up your e-wallet, it can all be found in there. So you can check that guideline out in the link below. Throughout many chains of China over the years, Trip.com has always helped many tourists come to China and have a great time. Truly, coming to China and visiting it, it's a once in a lifetime experience. So you should come to yourself and experience this magnificent 5,000 year old culture and feel its charm. Yes, and a big thank you to Trip.com for supporting this video. See you guys in China. Bye.